So after 15 votes, Kevin McCarthy is now House Speaker. Press is saying politicians are describing the circumstances that this has come about as, as calamitous, as chaotic, and signifying the unruliness and the, the lack of control that exists within the Republican Party. Quite the opposite. In fact, it represents a very vigorous exercise in democracy and a reminder of what our constitutional republic is all about. Let's dig into some details. I'm Brendan Fallon. And I'm Lee Smith. And, and we're, we're over, over the, the target. target. With the Republican Party winning the House in the midterms, you might expect that the House Minority Leader uh, would then become the House Majority Leader pretty seamlessly. Uh, Kevin McCarthy would take that position without too much trouble. But that's not what's happened. What we've seen is a fair amount of division and disagreement about him finally taking this position within the House and his granting of quite significant concessions in order to take that position. Press is, is describing this as largely a, a personality issue, a personality conflict. How do you see that, Lee? Well, I mean, there are definitely some personality uh, clashes, and you saw uh, Representative Matt Gates from Florida. You saw um, some of the things that he said on TV. I, I, think, I think he called Kevin McCarthy the biggest alligator in the swamp, and being from Florida, Gates would have some sort of experience of alligators. So there was definitely some back and forth like that, but it wasn't just about personalities. That's the way a lot of people wrote this off. It was just about personalities, but, but it wasn't. There were real substantive issues here. I know that one of the, the issues that have come through strongly in this, and this relates to the concessions that the Freedom Caucus and people like Gates have pushed for, are around spending and having greater control over the kind of spending bills that get, get pushed through Congress. I imagine that's a major issue. What, what else, Lee? do you see as a substantive issue that's come through? That's definitely a very big issue. They signed the omnibus bill uh, a couple of weeks ago and people are still very mad about that. The Freedom Caucus and others, <laughs> as many Americans are right to be outraged by this as well. At $1.7 trillion spent on a whole bunch of garbage. So yeah, what they wanna do is they want to be able to pass real budgets, not just these uh, continuing resolutions or omnibus bills like that, which no one really understands what's in it, um, to quote uh, outgoing speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, until they've passed the bill. So that's, uh, that's very important. Another one that people keep talking about is a motion to vacate the speaker of the House and only needs one person now, one representative, to bring that to the floor. A very important thing is they're going to have a special subcommittee now on the weaponization of the federal government. It has to do with the you know, with the various crimes and abuses committed by the FBI, Department of Justice, Department of Homeland Security, and other federal bureaucracies against the American people. So that's another important thing they got out of this negotiation. And I know that was one of the things that, that McCarthy mentioned in his address. He spoke about targeting the weaponization of the FBI, also investigating the, the withdrawal from Afghanistan, and doing something about all the hundreds of thousands of jobs that have gone from America to China. The investigations are very important because uh, if we step back for a second and look at right now the, la the layout of the government, that sort of explains what the Republican-led Congress is supposed to be doing. Remember, the president is a Democrat. That's Joe Biden. The Senate is led by, uh, also led by Democrats. So the uh, Republican-led Congress is extremely limited in what it can do. Right, the kind of legislation that it would join the Senate in passing um, is, is the kind of legislation that is going to get a lot of Republican voters angry, right? They can pass legislation paying um, or giving more money to Volodymyr Zelensky to wage a pointless war in Ukraine, and they can spend a lot more money on climate change, right? But Otherwise, it's going to be very hard to pass legislation. And we don't want them spending that money on climate change or on Ukraine. So the Republican Congress then, its role will be in large part about investigations. Certainly, Lee, over the past year, it almost seems like a, a primary function of Congress has been to get more and more money to Volodymyr Zelensky. It, it's, it's become an imperative for them. What's interesting is, is the way that this has been framed by the press, this is a bad sign for democracy, that there is this level of, of division, this level of disagreement within the Republican Party that they have control of Congress, kind of like the, the lunatics have, have taken over the asylum is, is the impression that they're giving. And um, 
I, I wonder what what is behind that. Why why is this kind of angle being pushed so much that this is a, such a bad thing? I think there are a number of different things. I mean, first of all, let's remember where Nancy Pelosi was Speaker of the House, and she did keep all of the uh, all of the power. Uh, in the House concentrated in her own hands. So one of the things that the Democratic Party aligned press is talking about is uh, they're talking about dictator Pelosi because that's how she ran her affairs. So the idea that uh, that's not how the speakership is necessarily supposed to uh, work is very strange and peculiar to them. You mean that these people, these, these people are really going to be arguing with the Speaker of the House and there's going to be different people with different opinions and they're going to contest uh, they're going to contest each other. Why that, that, that looks very sloppy and very messy to us. When, of course, this is precisely how it's supposed to work. We're talking about a very large body of people with different opinions, when people with different constituencies who want and need different things. This is the way the thing was designed. This is one of the uh, most impressive displays in the last several years when we look at all the, uh, the corruptions of, uh, of our democracy, when we've seen how uh, the, our, our constitutional republic has been attacked, when we look at the violations of the First Amendment, and you and I have gone through this so much, uh, attacks on freedom of speech, we've, we've, we've talked about Second Amendment rights, we've talked about uh, the Fourth Amendment, uh, right to privacy, and all of these things have been overrun. And here you have people who are actually arguing and contesting each other for what is most important for their constituents and what this body of elected officials need, needs to focus on. It's a great reminder of what we're supposed to be doing. It seems to hop back to, to America's founding and the, the idea that America is a, a constitutional republic uh, as opposed to a democracy. This is a soundbite from Dan Smoot, who had the, the Dan Smoot Review from 1957 to 1971 commenting about this situation. It's a very historic quote I think we should listen to. A constitutional republic, not a democracy. The ideal of a democracy is universal equality. The ideal of a constitutional republic is individual liberty. A democracy always degenerates into dictatorship which promises government guaranteed equality and security, but it delivers nothing but poverty and serfdom for the people it robs and rules. In this century, great strides have been made toward the goal of subverting our republic into a democracy. The foremost tactic of the subverters is subversion of language. By calling America a democracy until people thoughtlessly accept and use the term, the totalitarians have obscured the real meaning of our principles of government. If you're enjoying watching this episode of Over the Target on YouTube, you can find the full version on Epoch TV. Watch us on Epoch TV exclusively, where you'll find Over the Target and all your favorite Epoch TV shows.